Welcome or welcome back, I'm the Ink Archivist, here today with a tiny itty bitty unboxing for the Hokuro feed. The Hokuro is a dip pen made by Sailor and they sell feeds separately. The smaller nib sizes don't come with feeds installed, the larger nib sizes do. They'll specify on websites if you want to know. And you can install those extra feeds on your smaller nibs so that you can write with them longer, which we'll get into. I was super excited because I got my little <laughs> cardboard box here. Yoseka sends um, return labels and boxes with ink samples once you hit 10. So I hit 10 perfectly with this order. So um, I was curious to see if I needed to remind them or anything, but no, they kept track and got my stuff. So that's awesome. So here are all my goodies. I say all my, but it's really just a Hokuro feed and three samples because I was kind of embarrassed to just get a feed. They're like $2, <laughs> you know, the shipping cost more. But when I bought the pen, the feeds weren't in stock and it seems like they've had a problem keeping them in stock. They've just been flying off the shelves. So here are the inks. We have Dominant Industry Citrus Yellow. Dominant Industry Maple. And last, but certainly not least, uh, Yoseka Ceramic Series Tongue Mise Blue. So I haven't had a lot of experience with Dominant Industries, um, and I ha hadn't tried any of the ceramics inks yet, so I was really happy to get a little bit more experience. And I got more Yoseka stickers as always, and a little cute postcard. I wish they said which ink they're using for the uh, signatures. Sometimes I really like them and I <laughs> wanna know. Oh yeah, it's super nice of them as always. Don't know what I'm gonna do with all these stickers. Maybe you could uh, let me know what you do with yours. Cause I'm amassing a pile. And here we have the feed. And again, this is basically just a little plastic add-on that you can put on your dip pen. Not much to it. So I'll just show you really quickly how to install it. You basically just um, press it into your pen and it'll lay flush there, and then you can easily remove it and reinstall it. So now we'll be taking a look at those three ink samples, swatching them out and doing a sample sentence for each. But beforehand, I wanted to show you this gross crusting from that citrus yellow. Uh, reminds me of some diamine pumpkin there. So we'll start out with that ceramic series Tang Mi Se Blue from Yoseka. It's a beautiful, unique color, boasting a lot of shading um, from what I can tell. And the Yoseka Ceramic series has a very interesting story behind it, so if you haven't engaged with any of their videos they've made on it, or the descriptions on the websites which uh, have pictures of the ceramics they're based on, I highly recommend it. It's very interesting, and I think that inks based off of something, you know, historical or from nature tend to come out looking especially incredible because they have that vision and intentionality behind them. So for the second ink here, we've got Dominant Industry Citrus Yellow. And I apologize for that little blurriness there. Got some focus issues. So I do actually really like writing with yellow. <laughs> Maybe I just like torturing myself. But I, I think part of it is I don't often have to read back what I've wrote if it's studying or journaling. This yellow is pretty readable, comparatively, of course. One problem you get with some yellows is they lean too far into the orange category, and I wouldn't say this does that. So last week we have a Dominant Industry Maple. And I picked this one because it was just so darn unique. I don't even really know how to describe it. It's like a uh, desaturated salmon with some brown mixed in it, I think is the best I can do. <laughs> but it is very evocative of maple leaves. It's readable and it's kind of fitting in its own niche. So I really like this ink. I think for somebody who's been looking for something in this range, uh, this is really filling a need for them. I do think it's, funny how many hundreds of inks there are, and yet there are some that really still are able to stick out and don't have a lot that are like them. So here's a close look at those three inks, and then we will move on to <laughs> testing out that Hokuro feed. So again, the purpose of the feed is to allow you to write longer on a single dip. So we're going to be testing out how much you can write with it. And I wanted specifically to make this actual writing uh, to start with here. Yoseka did a video about the Hokuro and the feed in which they did some testing, but it was more scribbling rather than actual writing, so I wanted to see um, if it was equivalent or if it seemed a little bit more or less when you're actually writing. 
<laughs> I'll kind of spoil it and say it's a little bit less if you're actually writing, but it's still an impressive amount. So now that I've been using the Fine and the 2.0 for about a month, I thought I would also offer kind of my overall thoughts, especially uh, in conjunction with this feed, which is that I think this is a invaluable tool. If you're swatching out inks, if you're going places, the Hokuro is really hard to beat, and I've been seeing it everywhere, and I think that's well deserved. And I think that this inclusion of the feed really helps to minimize that one downside that it had, which was the low capacity of ink. And for $2, I think that's a, a fine price to pay to you know, bolster up that last problem. I think even you could have a bottle of ink on your desk and do your journaling because you're getting a paragraph here, as you'll see, and just, you know, open your bottle, dip it, and reclose it if, like me, you have cats roaming about or other concerns. You don't just want an open bottle on your desk and you don't want to fill an entire pen with the ink. You just kind of want to dabble or experiment with it. So that's my glowing review <laughs> for the Hokuro. So if you're wondering, if you're on the fence, I definitely say give it a try. If you're curious about what I'm actually writing here, uh, I was going back and forth thinking, what on, on earth am I gonna be writing down for this? But I had Pride and Prejudice on the brain, so I thought, okay, I'll do the opening to Pride and Prejudice. Uh, I'm not obviously including the breaks or anything for the dialogue. I'm just writing straight because I just wanted to see how far I could get. And uh, where you're seeing now is where I start experiencing some problems and then shortly after it would not go any further but again like I said this is quite a lot of, of writing I mean you don't have to do like three dips to get a page in of writing which is not bad so then I just decided to do some kind of squiggly lines to do uh, another dip on so again that first part was just one dip and the second part is a second dip but I only dipped the pen twice and I decided to use that Tang Mise Blue for this sample because I liked it the best of the three inks. I had just chosen of the ceramics because it was my personal preference. As you, as you might know if you've been around here, I do love my muddy greens. But it ended up being more timely than I expected because Dominant Industry just released their Cel uh, Goryeo Celadon ink, which is kind of in the same vein as this one in terms of green color and it has a similar inspiration with pottery but it does have sparkle if you want that diamine also has celadon cat coming out which again same kind of green same kind of inspiration but that's it for me thank you for watching and have a good one bye